So two equations, two unknowns. We need to solve them for the steady state amplitude and the steady state phase lag. But we can't do it algebraically. You can't just solve one for A, say, for example, solve one for the amplitude, substitute it in the other. It doesn't work because the phase lags are inside sines and cosines. So you got to do it a different way. The way to do it is to recognize that we can get the tangent of the phase lag, because that's equal to the sine of the phase lag over the cosine of the phase lag. And those are two things that we have. In our two expressions, we have sine in the imaginary part, we have cosine in the real part. So let's see, then, what is that tangent equal to? Well, when we take this ratio, the f naught over m's are going to go away. Right? So both the sine and the cosine, if you look, both have, on the other side of the equation, an m over f naught. And we're taking the ratio. They each have the same m over f naught. That's going to cancel. Don't worry about that. They also, every term has an a s in it. So those are going to cancel. So that's good. We're trying to get rid of AS. We're trying to solve for what is the steady state phase lag. So you can see this is going to work because all the bad stuff cancels. And what we're left with is for the sine, the only thing left that's not going to cancel is beta times omega in the top. And the only thing left in the bottom that's not going to cancel is the omega naught squared minus omega squared. Okay? This property of the system. This is also a property of the system, right? This is square root of k over m. This is the drive frequency. So really, that's it. If you want, we can take an inverse tangent. If we can say the steady state phase lag is the inverse tangent of beta omega over omega naught squared minus omega squared. Sometimes physics gives you things that aren't instantly intuitive, OK? But that is what the steady state phase lag is. When we plot it, we'll be able to maybe understand it a little bit. Don't get your hopes up. OK, so now we also need the steady state amplitude. OK, so if we look up here. Uh, it's not going to be easy because, again, we can't do it algebraically. We now have delta s, the steady state phase. We can plug it in, but then you have cosines of inverse tangents, and that's not going to, it makes a mess. The best thing to do is use another trig identity and say, let's use the fact that sine squared of the steady state phase lag plus cosine squared of the steady state phase lag is equal to 1. We always know sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So let's use that and see if it gets us anywhere. OK, so we're not doing a ratio. So all those little extra terms aren't going to cancel out. We're just going to have to keep every one of them. So let's see. Sine squared is going to be um, sine squared. Oh my god. So beta squared omega squared a s squared m squared over f naught squared, everything squared. Okay? And plus cosine squared. So now the cosine um, is even worse. I think what I'm going to do is write the m over f naught kind of by itself m squared over f naught squared and uh, keep the other part a little bit separate. So it's going to be AS AS times omega squared minus AS times omega naught squared squared. Okay. So that is the um, cosine part squared. And that's all equal to what? It's all equal to 1. Not even equal to 0. If that were equal to 0, then maybe we'd be getting somewhere. But it's not. It's equal to 1. OK, so let's see if this gets us anywhere. Is there anything we can pull from all that mess? And the good news is there is something we can pull. We can pull the steady state amplitude. That's the thing we're looking for. The steady state amplitude, and we can pull m and f naught. All those common terms are right there. OK, and then what's going to be left? Oh, let's see. What's left on this part? is uh, beta times um, omega squared. Right? And then what's left of all this? We pulled out an AS squared, and it was squared inside of there, so that's OK. What's basically left is omega squared minus omega naught squared squared. Right? 
equals one. Whew. Okay. And then that you can actually solve for the steady state amplitude. These are all properties of the system here. These are all known quantities. F naught's known, M's known, everything's known. We can now solve for AS. The deltas are gone, right? There's no deltas in here. And we can say AS equals the steady state amplitude we want, um, equals F naught over M ends up in the top because we're solving for it and then taking the square root. So F naught over M is in the top, but the exciting part is in the bottom, is the square root of, and I'm going to flip the order of these two here, omega squared minus omega naught squared squared plus beta omega squared. And that is your steady state amplitude just in terms of things you know. And somewhere along the way, I flipped omega naught squared minus omega squared. I'm not sure where I did that. I was just making sure you were paying attention. Omega naught squared minus omega squared, blah, 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 blah. Somewhere along the way, I just decided just to mess with you to flip those two. So let's flip them back. That's the only mistake I made. Oh my god. Thank god I have tenure. There we go. Omega naught squared minus omega squared. And then that is the final answer. That is the amplitude. So now we can look at these and see what they mean, if anything.